Hi there, Richard Fulmer here, and welcome to another Richard's Rock Rambles. So today we're carrying on with our look at great debut albums, and the one we're looking at today probably started the whole ball rolling for the melodic hard rock genre. I'm talking about the first album from the group Bad Company, which was kind of like a super group, and their first album just simply entitled Bad Company. Excellent album with some really melodic songs, great songwriting as well, great vocals, guitar, drums, bass, the whole works. These guys had it down. So what happened was when Free, the great British blues rock group Free, broke up, two of the members, Simon Kirk and Paul Rogers, left, and along with Mick Rolfs, who was with Mott the Hoople, and Boz Burrell, who was with King Crimson, the prog group, they formed Bad Company. Quite a departure for some of them from their previous bands, especially Boz Burrell in King Crimson, a very different animal, Bad Company. So the album was recorded at Headley Grange with the Ronnie Lane's Mobile Studio in November 1973. It would be released the following year in 1974, and it would be the first album to be on Led Zeppelin's Swan Song label. They got their own label together and Bad Company was the first signing. Pretty good signing to get, I thought. So it was released in June 1974. The album has gone five times platinum, which is pretty impressive. Um, and when it came out, it spent 25 weeks in the UK album charts. That's quite long for a debut album. You know, usually with debut albums, bands are kind of finding their feet, you know, which direction they're going to go. Sometimes bands get lucky, like the ones I've mentioned in previous episodes, and Bad Company was no exception. But they were lucky in that they were blessed with such great musicians. Um, in 2015, there was a two-disc deluxe version of the album, which I still need to get my greasy paws on. Um, I only have the normal CD version. and The extra one, the, the bonus one, has a lot of extra tracks, um, alternate takes, remixes, a really nice collection. I have seen it, actually. It looks great. So who was in the in the band? So on vocals you had Paul Rogers, the great Paul Rogers with that great voice of his. Um, he was previously with, as I mentioned, with the band Free. So he was there on vocals, rhythm, and acoustic guitar, piano, and tambourine. Quite versatile, old Paul. Then we had Mick Rolfs on lead guitar and a little bit of keyboards. Boz Burrell on bass. He usually played a fretless bass, which actually gave the the band a, a different sound, you know, for a hard rock band to have a fretless bass was quite unique. And then on drums, Simon Kirk, also from Free. Uh, great drummer, rock solid, always plays in the pocket. Not flashy drummer, not a huge kit, but what he does, he does well. Um, the highest chart position for the album was number one on the Billboard Top 200. And number three on the UK charts. And the band was also managed by Peter Grant. Peter Grant was, of course, the manager of Led Zeppelin. And because they had signed on to the Swan Song label, they thought, well, hang on, we need a good manager. Why don't we just get Peter Grant? He was up for the game, and the rest is history. A great album. Um, the next, I would say, three or four, or all the ones that featured Paul Rogers up to Rough Diamonds. Rough Diamonds has its kind of a patchy album. Uh, all excellent albums and Bad Company, as I say, they were, they were the sort of blueprint for melodic hard rock. So let's have a look at the album. Very simple cover, but yeah, became an iconic cover. Bad Company. And that's the back, that's just the songs. As I say, I need to get the deluxe version because that's got a lot more photographs and info inside. Um, where the bad guys came from, etc. So let's just see if this one has got anything I can show you. Uh, okay, there we go. There's a shot of the guys. Right in the front there, that's Mr. Paul Rogers. And that's Boz Burrell, Mick Rolfs, and Simon Kirk. Probably all in their early to mid-twenties around this time. Not much older than that. Uh, obviously, after Bad Company, uh, when Paul Rogers left Bad Company, he would go on to other things. He sang for a bit with Queen. He's released numerous solo albums. And he's one of these vocalists that, you know, the older he gets, his voice just gets better with age. Um, some of the guys from that era have been able to keep their voices intact, and Paul Rogers is definitely one of those. So what are the tracks on here? Let's have a look. 
Can't Get Enough starts off with a great drum intro from uh, Simon Kirk. Just a great rock song. Excellent riff. Uh, excuse me, Rock Steady is the next one. Also a great mid-tempo rocker. Some great riffs in this album. Uh, Mick Rolfs is not a flashy guitarist, but he does just enough. Pretty much in this sort of Mel Galley, Bernie Marsden mold. You know, the guys that played for White Snake. Ready for Love. Almost all the songs on here were hits. The first three, Can't Get Enough, Rock Steady and Ready for Love, were all released as singles and they all did really well on the charts. Don't Let Me Down, which is a slightly slower track. Some excellent vocals from Paul Rogers. You know, this guy hardly ever did one or two. He only does one take, done. He never did two or three. He was just so on the ball. And then we had the great title track, Bad Company, which is features Paul Rogers on the piano with that sort of brooding, almost like a wild western kind of intro. The lyrics especially, all about gunfights and what have you. Just a great track, iconic track. The Way I Choose, also quite a slow track. Moving on, and then the beautiful Seagull, uh, sort of a ballad type uh, track with great vocals from Paul Rogers, and uh, a great way to end the album. Only eight tracks, not a very long album. I think the longest track is about five minutes. Yeah, Ready for Love is five minutes. But in those 30 odd minutes, you have a brilliant album. And bands like Foreigner and Journey and Oreo Speedwagon, they would all borrow from bands like Bad Company who started that whole melodic rock thing going, which became really big in the late 70s. This came out in 74, so they were actually a bit ahead of the game. Uh, the late 70s, sort of uh, the first Foreigner, Double Vision, those albums would become huge platinum sellers as well. And these guys, they got the ball rolling. Uh, the album was produced by Bad Company and Peter Grant, although his name is not mentioned here. So they were all part of the process, which being accomplished musos, by the time this band came around, they were able to do in the studio. And it's great when a band knows exactly what they want in the studio. And uh, yeah, just a brilliant album. And uh, if you don't have this in your collection, I would suggest you get it. Or if you've got some of the others and you're missing the first one, well, this is where it all began. This one and uh, Straight Shooter, the second album, Run With A Pack, Burning Sky, Desolation Angels and Rough Diamonds. All the ones with Paul Rogers for me are essential. Perhaps not Rough Diamonds, which as I say is a bit patchy. They were trying a sort of a country thing. Didn't quite work for me. Um, and then they got a reincarnation of Bad Company with a different singer. That was okay, although they didn't do much with those albums. And then they reformed later on in the 90s. Uh, released a few new tracks along with the greatest hits and they've been sort of on and off as the years have gone by well, I'm not too sure if they're going to be getting back together again but you know we, when you have albums like this to go back to it's great um, I often play this album and it doesn't get old like a lot of the debut albums that I've mentioned in previous episodes it's the, the mark of a truly great album is one that you can go back to and it still excites you and that's Definitely with Bad Company. So there we go. The debut album from Bad Co. In the next episode, we're going to have a look at an American band who incorporated a lot of brass into their sound. A band that I came into a bit late in my collection, uh, collecting years. But uh, definitely there as well. The first seven or eight albums essential. I'm talking about the band Chicago. And we'll be chatting about Chicago's first album, Chicago Transit Authority. Have a great week. Look after yourselves. Take it easy. And I'll see you soon. Cheers.